I'm Sandy, I'm 47 years old and I live in Somerset in England. But I've just arrived in Texas because I'm visiting my fiancé to organise our wedding. It's five to eight, the taxi will be here in a minute. Sandy will spend her last single night away from the groom, but it won't be the last. In fact, he's not even going to be at the wedding because he's a prisoner on death row. They won't release Reg to get married, and they won't marry us there. There is no contact at all between the prisoner and their visitor anyway. Unfortunately. Sandy is a twice-divorced mother of two and a grandmother. She's currently unemployed, but spends most of her time writing two and four prisoners. She calls herself a prison reformist. I started writing to prisoners uh, around about five, five years, five and a half years ago. I write to the inmates over in USA because I believe everyone has a right to have a friend, no matter if they're incarcerated or in the free world. Some of them, okay, what they did was, was wrong, but they're still human beings. And a lot of it is banter. They just need, I mean, they have to fill their time somehow, you know, and they need that contact with the outside world. You can build real good friendships real good friendships. I'm not on about the love thing or anything like that, but real good friendships. It was for a very personal reason why Sandy chose to write to death row inmates. She was diagnosed with leukaemia when she was four and a half years old. And it wasn't until she was 27 that she had the all clear. I myself felt I was gonna die. I didn't have a date to die but I was sitting around waiting to die. So I put myself in their shoes because I lived it. So I do know what it feels like. Sandy has had seven death row pen pals, but a year ago, one of these, Reginald Blanton, became more than just a friend. I'd just come out of a relationship. Um, I was already writing to Reg and I had this letter from Reg one day and first of all, I thought he was joking because he was always bantering, you know, in letters. And he said, I was thinking of snapping you up and taking you off the market. And I laughed and I wrote back. I said, well, why don't you then? You know, thinking it was a joke. And he wrote back and it just started from there. In 2001, Reginald Blanton was convicted of shooting his friend Carlos Garza in the head after Reginald supposedly stole some jewellery from him. Reginald has always proclaimed his innocence and hopes that soon he'll hear whether his appeal will be heard by the US Supreme Court. But whatever happens, Sandy wants to marry him. My honest opinion was, why? There's plenty of men available in this country. But there again, at the end of the day, if she wants to, to do what she's doing, she's helping an American citizen. Um, not only that, it's giving him a bit of happiness as well. I mean, it's making Sandra very happy. She's enjoying it. It's not doing nobody any harm. I'm, I'll back her up 100%. She can go do whatever she wants. There are currently over 100 women in Britain who are emotionally involved with men on America's death row. Some women know their man is guilty of his crime. Others are convinced that they're not. I know Reg is innocent. And I will say that to the day I die. Reg is this real spiritual person. He is a real love. I mean, you can go and sit and talk to him face to face. And sometimes when we visit, it's like we sit opposite one another. Obviously, we have to use the phone and, you know, you've got the glass in front of you. But it's how he bores his eyes into you and 
and you feel this connection with him and it's like this spirituality that you don't have to speak you don't actually have to speak to him because you can read each other and that is how close that we are it's only a couple of days until sandy leaves for texas to see reg she's only been there four times so most of their relationship is made up of the hundreds of letters they write when Reg writes, he'll always start off, I love you, my queen, because I call him my king. Um, and if he's got something bad that he wants to say to me, he'll say, right, OK, hear me out. You know, but it's just like a normal couple, except we haven't got the normal couple privileges. But I think you can get very close to somebody um, in a letter. I mean, you build a real close friendship. If you want to have sex with somebody that you can't even see or touch, obviously that's when you get the letters. I'm just being honest. You know, they, they want to write you sex letters or you want to write them. That's entirely up to the individual person. Do we ever argue? Yeah. They, um, just like anybody else, except it's in letter form. And then when I do go to visit him, that is when I get it. <laughs> He will, he will sort of say, I'm stubborn. I admit it, yes I am, but then so is he. So, yeah. During his eight years on death row, Reg has had several appeals based on the fact that no DNA evidence was presented at his trial, no murder weapon was found, and all African-American members of the jury were removed from the trial. According to the only two witnesses, they were forced to sign statements against Reg under the threat of being charged with the crime. Reg has also had two lawyers during the process, the first of whom didn't file his innocence claims in the state court, which has resulted in these being barred from ever being heard. You know, when people talk about how the death penalty works in the United States, I suppose the simple answer is it doesn't. It's an insane system. Right now, there are about 3,700 people facing the death penalty in the US. At your first trial, you get a lawyer of some sort, although the quality of the defense is just abysmal, and, and you get a lawyer for the first appeal. But then for the rest of the process, which is the vast majority of the case as it drags on for 10 or 20 years, you have no right to a lawyer at all. You're meant to represent yourself which, I mean, in all honesty, is one of the stupidest rules of American law. So ultimately, one great criticism of the American system is you end up on death row, not necessarily for the crime you committed, but for the lawyer that you received for the process. Sandy writes and manages several web pages for death row prisoners. It's like a full-time job. OK, I've got a son living at home, and I've also got a grandson and a daughter. But you do work around that. You know, when my son's in bed at night, I will get on and do what I need to do. When the inmates write to you, they might send you some writings to put up on their pages for them. Could be anything about their case, or maybe just a general diary from week to week. Then at the end of the month, you send their comments or their printouts to them. So it keep, keeps their mind active. I wouldn't say I feel sorry for them because that is not the word that I should use. Um, I feel for them um, and their families and also the victims' families. It's, it's a system that is not working. But Sandy's determination to help can come with a price. I've had in the past a lot of hate mail um, via the internet, um, death threats via the internet. But it, it hasn't bothered me because it just shows how shallow some people can be. Well, the hassle's on the internet. I mean, the, the death threats, and to me, that's just people that don't know, they don't know Sandra. Until you get to know somebody, I mean, like I say, I've known Sandra all my life, so I know, you know, how she feels. Things like that do hurt, words hurt, but, um, I think she's a strong enough girl to come through at the end of it, hopefully. But you never know, you know. Sandy is leaving for Texas tomorrow, and each time she goes, 
people always comment. You know, say, OK, if they say, what are you going over there for? I'm going to visit Polunsky Unit Death Row. And then they do ask questions, you know, or were they they're convicted, they should be in there or something like that. And I said, well, I said, you don't know Texas then. And I leave it at that. At a motel in Livingston, Texas, Sandy is getting ready to see her death row fiancé to sort out their wedding arrangements. Despite their 19-year age gap, Sandy and Reg both profess this is true love. It definitely is true love between Reg and myself. He is a beautiful person inside and out. No matter what people say about some of those prisoners, Reg is a real man and he makes me laugh, he makes me cry, and I wouldn't swap him for the world. I wish that I could at least have contact visits with Reg, so I could hold his hand, or he could, like, smell the perfume. I often think of times when um, Reg could be free, that we could spend proper quality time together. And if you don't think on that, then you, you just don't have the hope, don't have the dreams, and everybody's entitled to their dreams and hopes. And that's what keeps some of the guys going, it keeps Reg going, keeps me going. Polanski Unit is a maximum security prison with 330 prisoners on death row. I'm always nervous when I um, go into the prison on a first trip, you know, the first visit of a trip. Um, I don't know why it's just that place, but, you know, after a while it, it's OK once you've been sat in there for about 10 minutes. For fiancé Reg, it's been a nerve-wracking morning too. At first, I thought I was just strong in this macho man because I didn't feel any butterflies, but then like, when six o'clock rolled around and I knew that it was two hours before she was going to be here, <laughs> I was nervous. I was real nervous. I was so nervous I had to meditate. And then I didn't know if I was going to cry. I got all emotional. <laughs> we were not allowed to film the visit between Sandy and Reg. But today, they get to spend four hours together. And despite the prison walls, this has never affected the way Reg feels about Sandy. I do remember in the moment that I first fell in love with her. It was out here in visitation. And uh, she wasn't visiting me. But uh, I got to see her for the first time. I recognized her from her picture. And uh, I told my mama, my mama was visiting me. I told my mama, I said, Mama, that's, that's Sandy. Get her attention, get her attention. And so she said, are you, are you Sandy? And she said, yes, she said, this is Ridge. And she looked at me and that was it. I was gone, I've been gone ever since. I don't like seeing him in there. Um, when you do go and visit, you just want to break down the glass and get him out, because it's a hell hole. People can say, oh, but he's done something wrong, he should be in there. But they should learn to know Reg and then maybe make a judgment. Sandy and Reg tried to enjoy their meeting, but their wedding is the furthest thing from their minds. They've received some serious news. Reg's final attempt for his appeal to be heard by the Supreme Court has been denied, and an execution date will follow any day. Reg is... He tries not to show it, but he, you can tell deep down that he is scared. He is scared of being killed because of something that he hasn't done. I'm scared for him. Um, I have my tears. I've just got to stay strong for him, really, stay more focused. The first thing that went through my mind was her. And uh, I felt like I felt like I was ruining her life 
because I can only imagine how that made her feel. I tell her, I tell her, I said, baby, you crazy. Your love blinds you. To me, he's always been there. You know, I've always had him there by my side, is, you know, figure of speech. So to have him not there, I don't personally know what I'm going to do. She was the only person that I can express myself to like that, that would stay in my life long enough to go through my ups and downs with me. But I can go through that alone. And I would go through that alone if I knew that it would prevent her from being devastated by a state killing me. And whatever happens to Reg, I'm, I'm going to be there for him anyway. Even if it is an execution date, he, he's known this from the start. So I'll always be there for him. Reg's family cannot afford a private legal team. His appeals process will continue, but he's now on the third lawyer assigned to him by the court, and resources are limited. Reg's lawyer was supposed to have gone to see him again for a second time, which again for the second time didn't turn up to see him. So that is something that, you know, I'm going to have to find out why he didn't turn up, because Reg needs to see his lawyer at this point in time. John Kimmel's office, how may I help you? Hello, is it possible to speak to John, please? He's not in here, take a message. Or would you like his voicemail? Um, no, what it is, um, I went in to see Reginald Blanton this morning, because I'm over in Texas from England, um, and Reginald said that John was supposed to have gone to see him on the 19th or the 26th, and he, he didn't turn up to see him, and Reg was wondering what, why he didn't turn up. Yeah, he didn't go because um, he was appointed to another case, and he had to be in federal court here the, that day. Uh, so uh, he's going, um, yeah, he's rescheduling... Oh, let's see if he told me the date. Um, I think it's July 9th that he said he was going to reschedule it to. July the 9th? July the 9th or the 16th, which is... Um, the thing is, time is going on with Reginald's case, and, <laughs> and he really needs to see John urgently. Yes, I, I, I know. And, I mean, he had already bought his ticket, everything. He was ready to go, but then he got that case, and they set it for that morning, so he had to, you know, cancel that. Right, okay. Um, okay, then. Thanks ever so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mama doesn't even know that he didn't turn up Friday. So he didn't, obviously, obviously didn't tell Reg's mum who he's supposed to be in contact with at all times. What a load of bullshit. Clive Stafford Smith is not Reg's lawyer, but has 25 years legal experience as a defense lawyer on American death row cases. Most lawyers don't go into the practice of law to represent poor people for very little money. And in death penalty cases, the resources are so limited I mean, in much of my career in Mississippi and, uh, you know, Louisiana, places like that, the most you could get paid for a whole capital case was a thousand dollars, you know, about maybe 600 pounds. That was meant to be the lawyer's fee, it was meant to be all the experts, all the investigators, everything. There was one time in Mississippi where we put a lot of work into a case and so we were being paid about a dollar an hour and we sued them under the federal minimum wage law. You know, they said, you should, at least you should pay us 5.25 an hour, if nothing more than that. If Reg can't get another appeal, it's possible he may only have a few months left to live. Sandy is desperate to marry him, but there's a problem. She's still married to her third husband. He's also on Polunsky death row on the same wing as Reg. In Texas, Sandy is trying to organize her marriage to a second inmate on death row. Last year, she married Charles Chucky Mamu. He was convicted in 1999 for a double murder during a drug deal. 
What was I thinking, marrying Chucky? I wasn't thinking. I really, I really don't know. You know, that's that's not against Chucky. That that was my mistake, the mistake I made. Sandy had been pen pals with 34-year-old Chucky for a year and a half. And on their second meeting, he proposed. When you actually meet them, especially in that place, it's a complete different thing. And I suppose that on the spur of the moment, and he was feeling things on the spur of the moment, so he asked me to marry him, and I just said yes. Chucky is a very intelligent person, but he's also a charmer, and that will woo any woman into his charm. She came, real understanding. Sandy's a real compassionate woman, regardless to how the situation worked out for she and I. She, she's a person who I feel is a genuine person of integrity, meaning that as she comes to you, she coming to you from the heart. One, two, three. Sandy and Chucky got married just a few miles from the prison, but he wasn't allowed to attend. His family, though, travelled in from Louisiana to be there. I was stood on my own with Chucky's dad, who actually was the one that gave me away and put the ring on my finger. My family adored Sandy. Uh, my children was looking forward to um, calling her stepmom and stuff like that. And at the time, I really thought that she was the one. But Sandy was beginning to feel differently. The night before the wedding, I was in my motel room on my own, and I wanted to run. I thought, what the shit am I doing? <laughs> but, um... I went through with it. It was something I just couldn't walk away. I don't think people understand. It was difficult to just got up and got on the plane and gone home. Her then pen pal, Reg, who also knows Chucky, knew something was up. I thought it was just, you know, marriage jitters. So I tried to encourage it. Like, oh, you just, you just nervous. Yeah, I'll be all right, just be there for him. And I tried to take up for him, saying that, you know, He'll open up, he'll open up his heart to you, just give it a little time. And I was just trying to, I was just trying to just have her back and just, but I didn't know that I was kind of pushing her into a hole. <laughs> so it's partially my fault. <laughs> Once she was back home, Sandy found out that despite being married, Chucky was still writing sex letters to other women. Yeah, I was. I, I was, I was a naughty. And, and again, it wasn't so much I wasn't committed to being faithful to her. Uh, there was a misunderstanding that I thought she was being naughty as well. Was I faithful? Hell no. Because by, by not being faithful, I knew that was the wrong thing. It was the wrong thing to have married him. But then, nor was he. After four months, their marriage had fallen apart. Things start fading away. The letters, you know, where you was getting a letter uh, four or five times a week, and you start getting two, but then you know what time it is. And then, you know, you start to arguing and bickering over nonsense. But that's pretty much, I can say, on the borderline of why it didn't work out with Sandy and I. We just realized it wasn't going to work. Now single, Sandy was ready to turn her blossoming relationship with Reg into more than just friends. But sometimes the lengthy divorce process has taken its toll. I know that outside of my own insecurities, that what me and Sandy have is phenomenal. And so when I focus on the love, all those shadows just fade away and it becomes irrelevant. Chucky has signed the divorce papers, but there is a problem with them. Apparently, I should have filled out the part that he filled out, and the part he filled out, I should have filled out. So it's all got to be done again. I feel that a lot of time has been wasted on maybe something that should have been with Reg, and that is something that I have got to live with now. But is marrying another death row inmate really the answer for Sandy? People are bound to think I'm mad, 
for doing what I'm doing, but that's their opinion. I've got my own. Even in the free world, you know, you could go into a bar and maybe meet somebody. That doesn't work out in a few months down the line. You're going out with somebody else. It's, it's very similar. Sandy's travelled six hours to San Antonio. Reggie's mum has organised a protest march for her son. This is the first time Sandy has visited where 28-year-old Reg used to live, somewhere he hasn't seen since he was incarcerated at 18. It's kind of eerie being here, knowing that once he was out here playing as a kid, and now he's in that place locked up. Never maybe to see this place again. Sandy hasn't seen Reg's mum, Anna, since last year. But they're very close and spend hours talking on the phone. Oh, so good. Oh. <laughs> How are you doing? It's been a tough ten years for Reg's mum since he was imprisoned. I feel like I'm alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. Not now. But for a long time I was. And Sandy... That's why I guess we talk so much on the phone. I know. Because <laughs> you've I know. been a joy to me. I want you to know it. I can <laughs> never. You are precious to me. And I'm so thankful to have you in my life. I want you to know Don't. that. I love you. Sandra's relationship with my mama is very important to me. It's like... You know, my mama didn't like any of the women that I've ever been with. None of them. Um, she had names for all of them, and it wasn't the name that they were born with. But um, <laughs> they got real close, like sisters, and that kind of blew me away. I thought that uh, I thought that Sandra was putting something in her drink or something. <laughs> The protest march is taking place outside the courthouse where Reg was convicted and has attracted media attention. Reg and his family and friends are still campaigning for his release. I'm overwhelmed with words. Because of the love that I'm seeing amongst everybody, you know, it softened my heart. But I need to keep my heart strong because of what the legal system's trying to do to my brother. And it is wonderful that Sandy, being here, being my brother's fiance, showing much support to stand by his side, stand by his innocence. What she is doing, I mean, myself, I couldn't see myself waiting for somebody to come out of prison. So it goes to show, it, it goes way beyond that. It's love, it's love, and that's what this world should be about, about love, not taking any man's life. Reg's family and friends will continue to campaign, but his fate does still lie in the hands of the legal system. You know, I, I don't know what my plans are, except for fighting for my son's life. Mama's not gonna cry to me. She's not gonna reveal that to me at all. And so I know, I know she hurts, and I know she's going through a lot of pain. And I've written her several times to try to get her to express that to me, but she won't respond. But she responds to Sandra, though. She cries to Sandra. So that's very, that's very important. I mean, who else, who else would she have? If Sandra wasn't there, she wouldn't have nobody else to do that with. So that's very important. There are times that I, I would call her 
it would be very late, so it would be like maybe two or one in the morning, her time. And I couldn't feel very down, but somehow we find things to laugh and talk about. Victory is mine. Tonight, as Sandy gets ready to leave Texas, the news item of the courthouse protest is being broadcast. Oh my God, look! It was a very emotional day today, very emotional. So I do, I just feel drained. It, it, might, it might not, I'm not even gonna say no more on that. Oh, that is so. Tomorrow, Sandy is heading back home for what could be months of stress and insecurity. Once I get back to good old England, um, first of all, I know the divorce, my divorce, is got to come through or should be through. And then Reg and myself can make plans for the forthcoming marriage. But with reference to his case, I'm going to keep on, keep in contact with his lawyer to find out what he's going to be doing. Keep in contact with Anna because we have got to look for a different way to get Reg some more exposure for his case. It's two weeks since Sandy left Texas. Now she's back, her relationship with her beloved death row fiance has to revert back to just the letters that they write. You know, I always um, go to the first part of his letter and then I'll go to the end part of his letter. And if the first bit starts off okay and the end bit ends okay, then I know whatever's in between I can just read and not worry about. <laughs> But this time, Reg hasn't sent her the love letter she was hoping for. Yeah. Still. I'll let him off this time. I know with Reg at the moment, he's feeling down and he's going to have those moments, you know? It's just like I have my moments when I'm in a bad mood, I'll write him a, a shitty letter, you know? But that, that's how we are, you know? That's how it's supposed to be, the good days and the bad. Take the rough with the smooth. Sandy is finding it difficult to sleep and has lost weight. The strain of the situation is beginning to take hold. But nothing could prepare her for the news that Reg has been given an execution date for the 27th of October. That's in just over three months' time. I actually found out on the internet it wasn't the sort of way I wanted to find out, um, but I did. But then that just shows what a sick system it is. I'm going to be honest, no, I'm not coping well, because I didn't expect this to happen. I mean, I went into the relationship with Reg um, with the reality that, it, that one day it might, but it just seems that it's just happened so quick. Sandy has also been sent Reg's warrant of execution. It says his name, um, and then it goes on to say, it is the order of the court that the defendant, Reginald W. Blanton, who has been previously sentenced to death, shall on the 27th day of October 2009, at any time after the hour of 6 p.m., be caused to die by intravenous injection of a substance or substances in a lethal quantity sufficient to cause death, and until such convict is dead, such execution procedure to be determined and supervised by the director of the inter, inter sorry the institutional division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. I mean, just like that, and that is how it's sent to Reg. That's his life. I would put my own self in his shoes if he could have his life. Yeah. Yeah. Because I believe in him so much, despite what people are going to say out there, I don't give a toss, really. All I know is I know Reg. 
and I'll always have his back and I know for a fact he's always got my back. Yeah. If the courts don't give me a stay, then they'll be trying to execute me on Tuesday. In the past three months, there have been more protest rallies and petitions for Reg, and he had an interview with the Board of Pardons and Paroles. These have all been unsuccessful in getting him a stay of execution. His lawyer has continued to make appeals, and he's stepped up efforts to get the ban of Reg's innocence claims being heard overturned. These appeals were denied by the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals five days ago. The final option is to take these same claims back to the US Supreme Court, but of all appeals submitted, only 2% are ever granted a stay. So it would sometime be today that you hear, or tomorrow, you know, morning, or can it go right through to the last minute? It, it could go through the last minute. He said that he's going to file all these uh, legal uh, claims of my concern to the Supreme Court. So right now it's just a waiting game to see what the court has to say. What Reg needs now is a miracle. A real miracle. It's not death that I'm scared of. I've dealt with the fact for probably the past five years I've been dealing with that. I came to accept that. The scare is what the, the state killing me might do to my mama. I'm scared of what it would do to my queen. I know she's being strong for me, but I also know it's tearing her apart. Sandy has spent the last few days visiting Reg. This is the most time that they have ever spent together. It's been very, very difficult since he was given the execution date. Um, he became very harsh. Sometimes it felt like he was taking it out on me because I was out in the free world and he was obviously where he is. Um, but also, it was like he was pushing me away because he didn't want me to hurt so much if it actually came down to his execution. But when you can actually um, air your differences on a face-to-face -face level, it, it is much easier to get it sorted. She tells me sometimes when we have our little arguments, right, that it wouldn't matter if I was there with you. And I think about that sometimes. You know, when you're in the heat of battle, you, you're like, yeah, it will matter even if you're face to face. But when she comes face to face, you just melt. And then you get mad at yourself for melting, right? <laughs> but that's, that, that's what it is. That's that love. The love overpowers everything. Sandy and Reg wanted to get married, but her divorce from Chucky has still not come through. The only thing Sandy could do was change her name by deed poll. She is now officially Sandy Blanton. I've been calling Sandy Blanton for a long time, but it's, it's, it's kind of like her putting a ring on my finger to have her actually change her name like that. So that's kind of like what that felt like. Yeah, I, I was calling in there for a long time now, but to have her do it officially, that feels really beautiful. In the days leading up to an execution, death row offenders can have all-day visits with their family and friends. They're still not allowed any contact, but have a private room with a glass partition. Today, Sandy and Reg have spent an emotional eight hours together before his execution tomorrow. He had his, it's hard to explain, but the hand, his, both his hands at the glass, and he was just sobbing, absolute sobbing. I've never seen him cry so much since I've been going to see him, and it was hard. Because then he's saying, you know, if they kill me tomorrow, I think Reg 
is just thinking a miracle now. People don't realise. During this last visit, the practicalities of what's happening tomorrow became a reality. Three men came towards me and they asked, you know, asked my name and they sat me down and they were the chaplains and the spiritual advisor and one of them is the ones that's going to actually going to be in the execution with Reg tomorrow. So they were just trying to, you know, say if I've got any questions to ask, to um, ask them. So I said to the main one, does it really hurt? What can they say? They, they can't answer that. They can't answer that. It's just like all business. Everything's business in there. It's the afternoon of the execution day. There is no word from Reg's lawyer. And because the US Supreme Court can make a decision up to the very last minute, Sandy has had to leave to go to Huntsville in case the execution goes ahead. Reg has always said he's innocent of the crime he's convicted of, but has very strong principles as to why he has stayed silent all these years. I have a suspicion of whom committed this murder. But it's a suspicion that I'm unable to speak of. not only because of my own personal principles, but to protect my family. I've said to him time and time again, you know, you've only got a few hours left. You know, why don't you speak up? And it's the same answer, I'm no snitch. Coming from where I come from, it is indoctrinated in you to not snitch. You know, Crips and Bloods, they never snitch on their homies. I decided within myself that I was going to stand on my principles, no matter what the situation was. And that's exactly what I'm doing. They know who the suspects were in this case. I was convenient. Sandy will spend the next few hours in the prison hospitality house with Reg's brother, Andre. They'll both be able to speak to Reg on the phone. Reg and his mother, Anna, decided it best that she didn't go to the execution. The Huntsville unit is 160 years old, the oldest state prison in Texas. It's been the home of all state executions since 1923. If Reg doesn't get a last-minute stay, he will be the 19th prisoner this year to die by lethal injection. If it was up to me, I would want y'all to actually be in there to be able to film the actual execution so that people can see the process, so people can see the state of Texas use these chemicals on me to kill me that the American Veterinary Association won't even allow to be used on dogs. Yes, I want y'all to document all of this. Despite Reggie's wishes, the state of Texas has never allowed an execution to be filmed. At 4.50 p.m., Reggie's stay was denied by the US Supreme Court. His execution is scheduled to take place in one hour's time. Shortly before six o'clock, Sandy and Reg's brother are escorted to the main prison to witness his execution. When they opened up the witness room door, I could see him laid on that gurney. And at one point, I went to walk in and I stopped myself and I, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do it. And I thought, I've got to, you know, I'm, I'm doing this for Reg. So I went straight up to the window and they asked him if he needed, you know, if he had a last statement. And he said, yes, I do. He did say to Carlos's family he was innocent. And his words was, Carlos was my friend. The morning visit that I had with him, and I said to him, when the poison's going, just, if you can, give me a smile 
so I will know that you're actually feeling okay. And he did do a smile, but after that, there was nothing. That was it. Gone. After everything that we've been through, after all the love we shared and all the fighting we did, that the only way that they allow her to touch me is in my death. I think that would be like spitting on her. I don't even want to think about what that, what that might mean to my queen. <laughs> <laughs>